So welcome to the workflow that has to deal with uh, generating a 2D base file of the utilities. And this uh, base file, it's the base file that's using across the whole project to show existing utilities. Yeah. Now, uh, this is not the 3D base file. The 3D base file, you're going to see that it's uh, taken care of in a in new, in another workflow. And that 3D base file is used only for purposes of crossings and uh, parallel runs. But for the you might, you know, in, in, the, in the projects, we try to make sure that, you know, we use as much as we can, you know, 2D data, so the software doesn't have to process too much. But at the same time, you know, we try to also help the 2D data by adding 3D data to it, you know, in the sense, you know, in the, I guess, in the form of uh, labels, like dynamic labels, that uh, can, uh, they can, you know, rotate and so on according to the view. So uh, that being said, you know, it's a, it's a, let's say it's a easy and at the same time, you know, complex base file. But uh, once you figure out, you know, how the stuff is supposed to work together, it would be, you know, it would be easy on the long run. So the idea to this stuff is whether you have a survey or whether you have only field engineering data like GS data, you know, for your project, the workflow is the same. It's only the survey, you know, it goes a little bit extra because, you know, you have the survey data. And for the survey data, you are supposed to remove the GS data, and you're going to see how it applies it, you know, at this point. However, if you do not have a survey, you are still supposed to, you are su still supposed or required to go through the workflow and get the data the way it's supposed to be, as true as you can according to the conditions in the field. Yeah. So that being said, we're going to start the workflow, and the workflow start, starts by creating a base file from the right templates. So we're going to go to the new browse templates, the same as we did before, we're going to go to the base files, and we're going to have to wonder again if it's a 2D file or it's a 3D file. And we know it's a 2D file, so it's going to be an X dash type base file. And then you're going to find you know, the right template in according to the workflow, and the right template according to the workflow is uh, this on the bottom, is X dash project dash BU dash site. So this one for us, you know, kind of stands for X, X is a 2D file, PROJ is the ID of the project, be it survey, or, you know, survey, you know, in case you do like existing, View is for utilities and then site into site. So pretty much is existing utility site. Now um, this one is this one is to be a base file that contains you know, all the utilities for the projects. Sometimes I've seen it done by uh, splitting the right multiple utility base files. So you know you can have one for maybe water, one for waste water, and one for you know um, for uh, uh, let's see any other utilities. In that case, you know, you're not going to have a BU site, uh, you know, you're going to have like a specific one, like a BU or, a, you know, BU dash water, BU dash, you know, wastewater and so on. Yeah. But for our purposes, you know, you're going to try to stick as much as you can to workflow and we're going to create a single base file base created out of one, you know, template. So I'm going to take this one in here. I'm going to take this one as the name. Control C, I'm going to copy that name. I'm going to open the template, you know, create a new cat file that's called drawing two or drawing one or whatever drawing num number of stuff. I'm going to come in here and click save. And on this, I'm going to ask you where you want to save it. You're going to save it in our CAD folder for the project. So I'm going to project CAD reference files DWG. And then in here, I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to change the PROG to the name of our project and be SSRD. So it'll be the 2D base file for utilities existing for the SRD project that we saved. And we are good to go at this format. You know, we can come in here and delete in a circle if you don't need it anymore. And we're gonna start by, add, you know, adding the reference, you know, base file that gives us the location of our, you know, of, of our site. Yeah. So uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do uh, like an xref, and I'm gonna attach it here. I'm gonna attach uh, joins, and we're gonna go to the Wanderer City of Austin, go to the projects, projects in here. I'm going to go to CAD reference files DWG and I'm going to find in here the you know data that's you know specific for stuff and we're going to start in here by uh, adding maybe the aerial. So I'm coming here via aerial because you know lots of times we're going to look for the aerial to for the data list you know for the data GS format and we have to reconcile it with what hash is on the ground. So I'm coming here aerial. When I attach the aerial, you're going to see that uh, you can always put a question: is this one is a grid or it's a surface file? Right now, the view site is a surface file, it's a ground file because it's a design file, and the data for it is going to be pretty much going to have to be brought in from the grid, you know. So now, uh, because of that one, you know, you're gonna, this one is going to be like, like a ground file, you know, you have to figure out, like, you know, this one, uh, at this moment, you're going to say, like, okay, this one has to attach the data from, uh, you know, grid. So that means for our purposes, 
I'm going to come here to overlay and uh, tell this one with a scale factor. Yes, it will be in here. You have to go from grid to ground. So there is a 1.00011. And then click overlay and click OK. As well as here, zoom extend. And you're going to see that you're going to have the data from the grid. Now I'm going to go to external references in here. You can turn up the layer and unload that one. Let me see, I load this one, regen, and then stop for the other way. You have the option for the reference to turn up the aerial in here below and go for the raster 12 inches. So then you don't have to worry about uh, it coming back back into life. So we're going to have the, you know, the aerial base file. If I go for it, start with the geolocation, I'm going to go here map aerial or map hybrid. You're going to see that the data is in the grid or ground coordinates, yeah, because the, you're going to see the aerial in here. It's in here, of this hour is placed in here. But uh, as I said before, this one is a design file, and the data from this one is supposed to be like, you know, in design purposes, pretty much it's supposed to be in the same coordinates as the survey. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to map off, uh, map uh, up right in there. I'm going to attach in here the service. I'm going to say href. I'm going to attach the survey. I'm attaching here the survey by attaching the side provider. And the survey, it's, you know, pretty much is ground to ground file. So I'm going to use a one scale. You don't have to worry about it. You know, it's a true, you know, coordinate. One to one and bake or you have, you know, the AL base file and the survey. I'm going to go in here to, for now just unload the AL base file. I'm going to look at the survey. And then in the survey, we are supposed to have on, on only the data bits, you know, at this moment, you know, because we are trying to look here for utilities. Yeah. So you can go up here for the layer manager in the V site. You can come in here and turn everything off. Because, you know, I don't have a list of stuff. And then you're going to go in here and find all the utility layers. Yeah. So if I come in here and look at the name, on the survey, you're going to find, you know, the C, there's no C, it's about the B layers. So here, look at for the layers that are supposed to be dealing with utilities. This is building, 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 baselines, bridges. Here, look at the, you know, the CAT TV. This is the uh, cable TV. You're going to find in here the communication. We're going to sweep in here with curves, find the chill water. If there's any chill water, so select all the chill water layers. Of course, you can define a layer state and you, you restore the layer state is much, maybe much, much faster. But otherwise, if you don't have a layer state, you can always, you know, return to like using the, the manual data to turn it back on and on. Here will be the, like, the electric. Then uh, I'm going to turn on the easements, you know, just as a reference. Then I have the uh, easement text. If I have the stuff, fences, I don't care about fences. Fiber, I'm going to have the fiber, of course. Fire. So pretty much your fiber and fire, turn it back on. Uh, flat plane, we don't care about it. One is the irrigation. We have to need the irrigation. Right in here. Natural gas, we're going to need the natural gas. Then nodes, we don't need any of our stuff. Nodes, right there. We're going to need for, maybe we're going to need the nodes just, you know, because, you know, you might have some, um, some utilities, of course, you know, you have to figure out what nodes you have for utilities, but uh, otherwise you can turn off and just look for specific for the nodes for utilities. So let's go in here and turn off all the nodes and turn in here just the utilities. It will be water, with water, water, uh, what's in here, traffic, uh, the storm, uh, stone, sign, right away, road, rail, property, parking, rapidly claim. I'm going to turn those on. Then I'm going to go here to natural gas, turn it on, uh, guardrail fire, turn it on, fiber, turn it on, uh, easements, you don't care, electric, uh, drainage node, chill water, communication, cold was not in the stuff, cat TV, cable TV, and it looks like we have all the lists that we need for, you know, stuff. But we're not done with all the lists that are supposed to be on from the V side because you can use this for mapping. And I'm going to go here to the V site. Uh, so we have the signs right away. We need the right away layer. Stuff on. Hold on. We will be left to the nodes. We are kind of skipping ahead a little bit. So this would be the reclaim. If there's any petroleum and stuff, we're going to change the petroleum. If you do not have anything but, but stuff. Parking, profile, 
Well, might have some symbology for it, so I'm going to turn it on. Uh, real text, real demo. Okay, roadway, we don't need roadway. We're going to need the right away because you know everything is based on the right away. Sections, uh, none of that stuff. Signs, you don't need site. Maybe the site utilities right in here. If there's anything that's in now unknown, it would be you know, in one of those layers. The storm, you know, you can turn on all the storm layers. Then you're going to be striping, none of that stuff. Sidewalk, we don't need sidewalk. Topo, none traffic. So it'd be, it'd be the traffic 100, uh, obviously it's traffic signaling. So I'm going to go in here, traffic, and I'm going to uncheck those ones with the traffic control. Like this, trail, transmissions, this is overhead transmission lines. So I'm going to take that transmission and unfreeze. The past utilities. So I'm going to turn the stuff on. Wall, we skip the walls. We're going to have the water. Water legs, text layer driver, turn all the water text on. Then we have wetlands, waterways, and then we have the wastewater. So this I should cover pretty much, you know, all the utilities from the survey that we have there up for you. So if I come in here, I'm going to see that at the beginning of the project, we're going to have uh, wastewater lines in here. And that map so this is pretty much an accurate data. It's in data that's mapped on the ground by the utilities. So you're going to say like, okay, if it's a manhole here, that means it's a manhole there. Yeah. So we are at this moment, you know, we are kind of done with the utilities from the survey. Now, typically, what I can do with this one is you know, I might change the layer, you know, color to all of them, but you can see when you get to it. I'm going to change the layer color to some other colors so you can distinguish between GS or utilities. And uh, we can keep, keep on this stuff. And um, let's go ahead and look at uh, getting the data that we have for utilities. If you remember, for utilities, we might want the data that's, you know, in specific uh, VA site. I'm going to say open. And I'm going to, I mean, going to need for utilities, I'm going to need only the data that's within this, you know, Polyline. So I'm going to take this cap, uh, polyline, I'm going to say cap is 0, 0. I'm going to put it in here in the view side. So you see, like, you know, I'm relying on another base file to bring in the data. So I see a page 0, 0. Now, when you bring the data, I'm going to see here unload on that one. I bring the data, you're going to see that the data is in grid, you know. So you're going to bring the data in grid, but you're going to move it to surface, you know, because the data is brought in grid and it has to be moved to surface. So in here, I'm going to try to bring the data, you know, the utility data for this location. And to do that one, the GIS data, we're going to go through the process of uh, uh, what we're going to do in here. We're going to do a little bit of uh, mapping workflow. Yeah, so it would be like use the mapping workflow to bring the data from the utility base files for the C. Now, utility base files for the C, we can find them under the ATX CAD in here. So we're going to go ATX CAD data sets and then under utilities, these are the data. The utility, pretty much you're going to find the water lines, water symbols. These water lines, storm drain lines, and we claim one and all this stuff. So we're actually going to bring all this data only for that area. And this is the GIS grid data. So the, the purpose for that data to be brought in, it's for you to have an idea like to start with, like you're going to have something to start with. But at the same time, you know, you, to be a complementary data. So for data that you do not have survey, you're going to use the corresponding GIS data. So knowing that one, I'm going to go for the mapping works, works workflow. It's going to be map W space and map workspace. So turn it on. I'm going to see on. I'm going to go here to the map explorer tab. And then I'm going to go to join so I click attach. And then I'm going to go to the OneDrive CD of us. Remember from the previous workflows, how do you access it? It will be easy for you to go in here and just click right next to it. And you see like this is the path. So see user, your user. One dress here, vast and it is cat their assets utilities. Yeah, so knowing that one, you're going to go to the C users, your user, find the one drive here, vast then you're going to find the one dress, uh, what's in his ETX cat their assets utilities. And then from the utilities, you're going to select, you know, the all of them. Pretty much, you know, you're going to try to bring all the utilities in this big file. So I'm going to say here, add and click OK. Now, when those ones, you know, they're added, you know, you're going to see on the background here, like if you never download it, you're going to be downloaded, you know, as, you know, before they get attached. Yeah. So you're going to be downloaded from the cloud to your local, you're going to be cached locally. And then once they're downloaded, you're going to be attached, you know, pretty much to your cat file, and they're going to be ready for you to define a query. And once you define a query, you're going to use that query based on this outline to bring the data from, the, you know, those base files that's inside or crossing this outline. So right now, processing changes with water, water symbols looks like it's going to be left to do. 
Arrive, I've got attached, and I'm good to go. I'm not going to go. So next step is going to be to define the query. You know, we're going to define a query that's based on this outline. So you're going to right-click on the current query, you're going to say define, and you're going to go for okay, from the left to the right. The query type is the end type of query. It's based on the location, so I'm going to click on the location. The location is defined by a polyline, and then set out to crossing. If you're not set to inside, you know, if you set it to inside, it brings only data that's inside of that, you know, stuff, and if it's any line that crosses the the, the outline, you're not going to be running. It has to be fully inside, you know, so let's say set it to crossing, and you're going to click on the define. Once you click on define, you're going to select, you know, the outline, and then you're going to set it, you know, so pretty much we define the, the query based on the location. The query mode is set up, you know, to be to drop because you are supposed to drop the data in. At this moment, you click OK, OK, and then you can right click on the query and query, or it says like execute is defined, or you can go straight to execute the query. Now, this one, if, 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 even if you don't click OK on this topic, say execute query, that query is going to be already saved in the cat file. Yeah? So I'm going to say here, click OK to be, you know, saved right now. I'm going to say execute is defined, the second step. And you see on the bottom here, it goes through all the objects in those base files and it brings them based on this outline. Right there, you're going to see that it brings the data. It opens one file at a time. Right now, it opens the stone J symbols, with water lines, with water symbols. Once it's done with all of them, you're going to be, if they're going to be brought in the base file, you may have something to start with, you know. So this one, let's say at this moment, you know, if you don't have survey, you still have to, you know, you still have to do this, uh, you know, this step, you know, because you're supposed to bring the data in. Now this data is brought in, and I'm done at this moment, you know, with the workflow in the, in the sense like, you know, I don't have to bring any data. So I'm going to hit detach. And the next step you are supposed to do, you are supposed to save the file. Yeah, so I'm going to say Control S to save the file. And we can go to the next, you know, part of the workflow. Remember, this data it's in this this data it's in uh, grid coordinates. It's to be brought into the ground, yeah. So to bring it to the ground, you are supposed to scale all this data. So if I come here to extend references, I'm gonna go to the B side. I'm gonna say here reload. You're gonna see if it has to be scaled, you know, that way. Yeah. So now in that one, I'm gonna go here to the B side. I'm gonna say unload. I'm gonna take, you know, all the data, and then I'm gonna type here scale. And ask you like what base point, you know, I'm going to say here 0, 0, and the scale factor, it's a 1.0011, yeah? This is for grid to ground, yeah? Now, if you have like the data, if the data is centric base, you know, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this step. This one is just to bring the data from grid to ground in case you have a scaling from 0, 0, because if you remember, I said, you know, before, the, the X view site or the utility base file, it's always a design file. So if it's a design file in the sense of stuff, it has to match you know, the survey coordinate system. So because the tunnel is scale to zero, click enter. And now if you go to external references and reload you know, the V side, you're going to see that we have like corresponding data in the survey. Yeah, so right now you're going to see that here we have like, you know, stone drain and so on. You know, find, you know, like a wastewater manhole, whatever. Right, well, you're going to find some of this stuff. Now, at this moment, I'm going to say save because we have moved the data. So now it's a matter for us to go to the next step. And the next step is showing up the data. So there's like, you know, here's like, you have the GS data, you have the survey data. And in here, in, when I say like about showing up there, you can see in here, I have a survey manhole in here. And then I have the data from like, you know, I have like, you know, a, like a manhole from the GIS, you know. So for me, like in order for me to trap the data, I have to remove one of these symbols, yeah? And those symbols to remove, it would be like, you know, typically the GS because I already have the survey. Now, once that symbol is, you know, modified, then I'm supposed to align the data or the line work to connect, you know, to the right data, pretty much to the data, you know, that's actually accurate, yeah? So how would I go about, you know, chewing that one or, you know, like about chewing up the data? I can look, you know, I can look at the data here, of course, you know, I can look at the data that's, you know, from, you know, from survey and then connect the data. However, for, you know, maybe for wastewater, they might work the right way, but a lot of times, you know, like for water and, you know, other utilities might not work because, you know, it's a lot of stuff that happens in between, like, you know, utilities and between, like, you know, features, yeah? So because of it, one, yeah, this is the most intensive step or, like, you know, this moment, you know, the chewing up the data is most intensive step because it's a research and modified type of step. You know, pretty much you are supposed to do the research and what's the data there, you know, put it down, like, you know, what material it is, what type of manhole it is and so on. 
and then update the CAD data, you know. So in this one month, you know, I wouldn't have to go through the whole, for me, like, you know, we stop a workflow. I'm not going to go through the whole workflow. I'm going to just go, kind of give you an idea of, like, you know, what, you know, you are supposed to do, kind of expect. And then you are supposed to pass all the data based on that, you know, like, step-by-step -step process, yeah. So let's look a little bit, you know, at the wastewater, how we deal, we deal with the wastewater. Right now here, let's see, but, you know, I have the data wastewater from the survey, and I have the wastewater from the... GIS, yeah. So for me, it means like you know, in here in this base file, I'm supposed to update you know this data to look at the survey one. So that means you know this line up in here, it should not be like uh, it should not go through here. The line should go through this map over here, yeah. So when it comes to our stuff, you're supposed to do a little bit of research, you know, and the research in here is done using the Aston Water, you know, data pretty much that's you know, available for the city of Aston users. Or you know, for if you're outside of Aston, you know, cab user, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be able to request that type of data using the form for it, yeah. So when it comes about like the data, pretty much the research, you know, which you're supposed to do it, all that research, you know, for us at the city is done via the operations web map, yeah. So when it comes about operations web map, this is the website, you know, you should have the website as a link, you know, if you don't have it, you can find it in the workflow of manual on the data, and you can go to this operations web uh, site, and then you're gonna look for the location of your project, you know, and this is the location of my project, you know, I already know that it comes from here from 360 down to Mesa, driving here. So all this is my location, my project is from here all the way to here. So for this location, yes, I have the line work, how I'm supposed to, you know, get, you know, the research data, because, you know, the research data tells me a little bit more than just, you know, like, you know, connect this data, might tell me like a specific, like how far away from right away is the line work, you know, especially for, like, um, let's see, maybe for um, uh, water. You might feel like for like, you know, natural gas, for example, it tells me like, you know, how far I'm, you know, getting from part, you know, property line, you know, and if you map the property line the right way, you should be able to offset that one and kind of get the line. So it's a chewing up of the data. Now, looking at the Ask the Water Web uh, Viewer, in here, you're gonna see that, you know, it, it starts right here and you're gonna try to, okay, I need to see the data. You know, to see the data, you have the option here on the bottom to have the letter list. So you're gonna click on the letter list and you're gonna be probably not, you're gonna be displayed with the you know pretty much you know the interface to you know to select your layers yeah and let's focus at this moment on the wastewater you know to focus on the wastewater you're gonna go on the left side you're gonna click on the wastewater layers right now now click on the wastewater layer you're gonna see that you know shows up all the data that you know as the water lets you see about the water the, the wastewater type of data yeah and here you're gonna see that you see the line work you might see maybe also the structures you know and you can click and zoom in here you can click on the plus and you can zoom in the area of your project. And right in here, maybe you're gonna look in the area where we have our design in here, because you know I'm not looking at the whole stuff, I'm looking just for a specific section because I want to focus on one of them to kind of give you, you know, the idea how it's done. So right here, you're gonna find, you know, right here, I'm gonna have the line work, and it tells me here pretty much in this event I have like maybe here I have a manhole, and then here I have another manhole, and here I have a manhole. So it tells me like pretty much how the data connects together. Yeah? Now, when it comes about stuff in here, you see here has the project ID for the, you know, for this wastewater. This is the, you know, the project ID. Then you have on the top of it what material, what type of material, it's, you know, AJC and stuff. Now you have all this there already in CAT 2, you know. So by going here to the view site, you're going to find that uh, you have on top of the label, you're going to have a stuff existing 8 inch AC. And typically in here, I, you know, I have a place where it's like, you know, or up, up and down like inverts, if, is, if that data is inverted. If that data is not inverted, you have to look at, you know, pretty much you can see like you, know, you have to expand your research and you have to look at, you know, old profile plans or stuff, you know, mother plans, you know, that they use, you know, to create, you know, this data. Yeah? So let's go back to Ask the Water Web Map Viewer. And you see like if I click on here on this pipe in here, you're going to be, you know, you're going to see that it says wastewater main uh, profile. It is the 890319, and uh, this much it is the stuff, you know, let me see if I have anything here. There's the profile, this is one or two, and I bet you if I go to the tool, it gives you the stuff of bars. So pretty much just two layers on top of each other, and right now it tells you if it's uh, in service, and it's uh, eight inches, it's an AC, it's a queued in place, a CIPB ply, pipe, and so on. So pretty much it gives you a bit uh, about, it gives you also the length for it, yeah. So that's about the pipe, yeah. Now, because about the manhole, you can click on the manhole here. Let's say if I click on this structure here, you know, if, if you can see that you have like, you know, six records, you know, this is the wastewater manhole. It might tell you like a little bit, you know, it's a service, elevation 847.30, there might be the elevation of grade, but this one is not necessarily the elevation of the, like, of the inverts, yeah? So for you, you are supposed to look at the profiles, you know, so at this moment, you have something to start with, 
but not necessarily something to get you like you not know, to the end. The same for start with, you know, so you have to look at a bit of construction plans and you see like it gives you the profile and here gives you, I don't know what else it gives you, stuff from actually other stuff connected to it, yeah, four of six and so on, yeah. So, so when it comes to Bobby stuff, you know, you have to look at the profile data, you have to get a little bit more, you know, like research on it. Now, typically for this water, it goes from manhole to manhole. So, you know, you kind of have to connect the manholes. Now, this one, you will see that, you know, the pipe here is not a straight, you know, the typically you use from manhole to manhole. It's a curved pipe, so you have to do your best, your best, you know, let's say you have to do your best to kind of, you know, make it a curve, you know, so it's not like, you know, very accurate. It's well, but, um, you know, it doesn't tell you like, you know, any offset from the property on this one. So you have to deal with it, you know, and stuff, you know. So that being said, you know, let's look at, you know, what can we get for it, you know. So in here, I have the wastewater on, and I'm going to click on the hyperlink to images. This one takes you like, you know, you're going to take you to the research data for the project. Yeah, so I click on this one, and then from here, you're going to, you know, select this stuff, you set it to profile, that's fine. And then I'm going to click on, the, let's say, maybe I'm going to click on the, you know, on the pipe in here. I'm going to click on this one. You should, oh, you see, like, it deletes it, it downloads the profile for that location it's a you know it's an image file but it's a tiff file if i click open this file you can see that it opens the old design for this one so if i come in here for this location i can zoom in and it tells you like in here it tells you like it's 17 and a half feet away from the right away next stuff you can see like pretty much you know i don't know how this one it is that's the mess i drive and then this one from here comes here and there's like five feet from the right away in here five feet from the right away so it kind of gives you an idea how you know stuff so if the right away is curved if you turn the right away and you offset the five feet is you're going to give you pretty much you know, the send line of the pipe, yeah? So, now, what you do with this type of data, you typically going to take this data, so I'm going to take, notice I'm going to control X, I'm going to take that, you know, you know, intersection or profile data, and I'm going to move it to the project. I'm going to say CDS, I'm going to go here to projects, find your projects, go to the design, I guess it was part. So it'll be here, design, and then I'm going to be under the utility coordination, and it'll be utility records, and I'm going to create a new folder here, which is called wastewater. But that one, I'm gonna put it in there. So pretty much, you know, you take your research data and you put it in the project folder, you know, and then you can look at it and update the data from the cat file. Yeah. Now here, when I update the data from the cat file, I like to see like the difference. You know, right now it's like both of them are green. You know, so what if I take the data from the survey and I'm gonna set it, you know, to a different color? You know, so I'm gonna take here all the layers, the colors of the layers, and I change here the color of the layers to something that looks different. You know, so maybe I'm gonna make them all of them red. And I made them all of all of them great. You're gonna see that you know I have an idea like you know what's in the survey and what's not in the survey. Yeah. So we might use the survey, this is the GIS data. So right now I've been here gonna find the uh, let me see distance, right? Well, distance in here to do a distance from the right away. So like 17 feet. So there's a 17 feet in that one. And I guess you know the stuff it is five feet from the right away right in here, maybe. This is nine feet, or I don't know which part of the stuff. So this is on 17 and a half feet. 21 feet it goes 17 and a half. So let me let's go back to the image file to kind of look at it and stuff. So pretty much it's close to what's supposed to be there. There's partial springs, five and a half. I have to look at this stuff. And a half, so it comes from here from the mesa. From the time now it kind of gives me an idea, like you know, is this one is correct enough you know, for this stuff? It just, you know, I just have the survey, pretty much I have the manhole, so I know the direct next to the manhole. It just says it's a five feet from the manhole. However, if I look at the data right in here, you can see that my survey or my uh, uh, right away data, unless I have, looks like you know I have I'm missing something here, the right away here, I'm missing line up in here. So maybe I'm gonna go to the layer manager and look for all the right away stuff. Maybe I forgot to turn something on because it's an old right away, maybe the new right away for it. The project's gonna be B, maybe the right away. Do I have something here that's off? Uh, what's off? Property, maybe under property. No property. Okay, property line. I don't have the property. This is the one. So we're gonna come in here, go to property text, and turn it back on. And I'm gonna say region. Let's go and save. I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna go to layer manage and see what layer is that one because I'm missing something here, and I don't know what. So I have the line working here, looks like uh, rather, yeah, so it, it looks like you know, it's from right away in here. Maybe it's, the plans have been updated and you know, it was more right away. So before like 
So this is like in here, maybe before like this branch, you know, got updated so one, the right away was this location, you know, but it looks like, you know, based on the updates and stuff, the right away it's at this location, yeah. So that means in here looks like uh, the data, you know, when I give you a stuff, you know, it looks like it was five feet from back in the, whoever, whenever it was that image. Rather, I don't know, when put this stuff done. Maybe the right has modified, this one is back in the 70s, yeah. So maybe stuff, you know, got, you know, modified with the right away. They can move from here, maybe they gave you like for access, because you know, I guess it's an HGB or some kind of stuff here. But you kind of get an idea, it's like it's supposed to be like, you know, from this one. So if I come, let's say me here, if I take a here, let's say a polyline, and I'm going to choose this stuff, because I'm assuming that, you know, it's at the same location as the other one, I'm say from here, I'm going to put it, you know, to here, the end point, I'm going to find another end point. But I'm going to end point here. And maybe I'm going to put arc second, nearest driver, I'm going to put, you know, choose the right way. Nearest driver, very good kind of made, you know, make mix right away. So I take this data in here, and then I'm looking at the, let's say, what the difference between this one, so would be the distance from here to here. This would be like maybe it looks like 15 feet. That stuff. I'm going to take this stuff here and offset it 15 feet. It looks like it gives me the right away. It was like there before. And if I take this one, offset this stuff, and I'm offset it five feet, you're going to give me the location of that pipe, you know, and that location of that pipe looks like, you know, let's see right in here. This is right it's close it's, it's to the manhole, you know, so pretty much, you know, you, are, you know, pretty much I'm, I'm, I'm good close enough to the manhole and this one goes from here and goes, you know, it connects in that one, yeah. So in, in, it, it's, a, it's a matter of view, you know, like as I said before, it's a matter of view, you like of connecting the data. And if you want to take pretty much, I'm going to take the data and connect it from here. So I'm going to go to here from the center of this one because, you know, it's the center of the manhole. From that time, I'm going to connect it, and then I'm going to go in here. You can extend this one if you have to, but it'll be a follow line from here, from the center of the manhole, and manhole it's uh, where's my where's water, it's river. And this is going to go like uh, like connect to here somewhere. It's going to be connected to this stuff, and then you know you're going to make you know to be all as a single, pretty much as a single power line. And on this one, it's supposed to be placed in the right layer. No, it's all, I put it the wrong one. This one's supposed to be in here. So now I'm going to take, you know, this line work. And this line, I'm going to put it in the B because now I'm connecting the data. I'm going to go to layer manager. Hold on, let me layer manager is open. I'm going to go here to the B layers. And then, because I'm connecting the data with survey grade. So I'm going to take, you know, this power line or this power line. I'm going to put this stuff here in the B wastewater line. Driver. And I'm going to do it here, I'm going to do a, maybe a reverse on this pipe because it's stuff in there. And pretty much, you know, that's how you connect it there. I'd be like, I'm connected from here to here. You connect it from here to here. Uh, did I put it in the right location? Yes, this one in here. It's five feet. I put it in here. So this one is this pipe. Which one is the opposite that I made? Uh, because you know, I have too many pipes on top of each other. That's the one. There's a sort of line. So it goes like in here. I'm going to say delete that one. Okay, this one, I'm going to move it in here and connect it to the center of this one. Right there, and pretty much keep going. Yeah. So at this moment, you know, this would be my pipe. We connect in here. Of course, it would make it, make it be better. Looks like it is a, there's a bend in here, deflection and so on. But it is like, you know, this would be like more or less like close enough to the place where the writer, you know, where, the, where you are. Um, where your uh, data is, yeah. So at this moment, this one is connected, the pipe is very connected. So the only stuff we are supposed to do is like, you know, since you already connected the data there, I'm going to come in here and delete this one because, you know, I'm done with it. I have already had the data for it. And then I'm going to go, but it looks like, you know, maybe I delete all everything that I didn't need to. No, it's fine. So pretty much, you know, in here, this one I already mapped it. So I'm going to delete that, you know, pipe. And then from here, pretty much, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep, you know, connecting the data to the other map, yeah. So the other manhole in here is going to be somewhere. Where's the other manhole? I'm going to come in here and select maybe, uh, let me see here, drive manholes. I can look at those. I can look at the wastewater last up in here. It looks like the next manhole might be right there. The next manhole. So max are going to be on a straight line. And it's right in this location. So this location, I'm going to take in here. I'm going to make a power line. I'm just going to put the power line in here. I'm going to put from the center of this manhole. 
campaign is going to be coming and it's going to be connected to that once I'm going to put it here, I'm going to put the center of this one for now. And then, of course, you can use the right away stuff, you know, to make it, you know, to make it, you know, like to have the deflection stuff when I say you convert to arc. And then once I have the right away, I'm going to have it, you know, better stuff, you know. And then you just have to put it you know, in dry layers. I'm going to say here, match layer, take uh, this one and match it to this one. And there you go, yeah. So once you've connected the driver, it's just a, it, it's just a matter of deleting the, you know, the GS data because you don't need the GS data anymore. And you connect it to the, to the, and it looks like the, and whatever. And it's pretty much just type, you know, so once you get in here, pretty much this one is not the anymore. That means in here, I'm supposed to connect this data to here to here. I should have a, I should have a, like a math hole, you know, at this location. So it looks like this unknown math hole, actually it's a wastewater math hole. So that means in here, I, I want to have the data from this one. I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to say add selected. I'm going to add, you know, this one. I'm going to say from this center, from this center of the map hole to the center of this map hole. This would be my next connection. So now in that one, I'm going to take in here, delete, you know, the old data. This is the GS data and have, you know, the updated data. And that's how you're supposed to do it, you know, for all the wastewater, you know. It's pretty much, you know, it's like just go for the stuff, you know, and update based on the research, you know, from both, like, you know, from any stuff that you have, like any, like, you know, any resources, yeah. Now I'm going to say you can draw S to save it. And uh, you can, you know, you can pretty much, you know, go ahead, you know, do the rest of them. And uh, you should be good, you know, at the end, you know, you should, uh, let's say this one is done. I don't believe that one, I don't believe that one. Now, the benefit of this stuff, you're going to see that the labels, you already have the ID for the map holes. You already know that it's an ADH AC, so pretty much, you know, can go to the next step, and the next step for us would be like labeling the, the, the data. So what I'm going to do it here, maybe I'm going to join this stuff together, I'm going to say, and this is that for me, it's like, at this moment, you know, this one should not be the file, it's like, you know, it's, it's still work to do to make sure stuff, you know, I would not have enough time to take care of it, but, you know, you still have to go through the process of, you know, connecting all the data the right way, you're supposed to make sure that at the end, your data set is accurate, yeah. So in here, I'm going to say a PJ, file line join, I'm going to connect, you know, this file line to this one, and it'll be as well as one in the stuff. Now, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I connect them together, I'm going to say reverse, uh driver so you're gonna come you know down that's all good on the bus so i have a single power line now the next step for us will be for us to label this type of power line so you know to label this power line we're gonna use like to label this you know utility we're gonna use dynamic labels if we labels you know and the way to use those ones we're gonna go through the um we're gonna use you know a bit you know uh, use some kind of something called the school property says yeah so properly says what we do is like they, att they attach, you know, metadata to the line work itself and then metadata is used by a label to extract it and place it on top of the, you know, pretty much on top of the line work, yeah. So I'm going to say control S, I'm going to save it right now and I'm going to go to the next step here. Come on. So labeling the utility, you know, so we are supposed to do for each of them and you're supposed to put the label at least one per sheet per time of machine and so on, yeah. So this one I know that's an 80 JC. So I'm going to go here and annotate our labels. I'm going to go in here and select, you know, the, uh, what it says here, line and curves. I'm going to use a line and curve type of label. And you see it's already predefined for you, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's like a single semi. I'm going to say add, and then you select, you know, the line that you're supposed to label. I'm going to say label this one. Now, see, when you add the label, it says an existing CO polygon utility utility description. That's because we did not add the mirror data to the line work itself, yeah? And to add the metadata to line work, we're going to select, you know, the pipe or the line itself. I'm going to go to properties. And then the properties, you're going to go to the extended data. And then extended data, you see on the bottom left corner, there's a button that says add property sets. I'm going to say add the property set. And then from the list in here, you're going to select, you know, you're going to select, you know, clear all. And you're going to select only the power line utility. I'm going to click OK on that one. And you're going to see that the stuff changes or, you know, the, the label changes from, you know, from the COA stuff, what it was before, to an existing pound you know, inches material project status, yeah? So for us, you know, this one is helpful because this is the label that has to be modified to say what we're supposed to, it's supposed to say eight, eight inch AC, yeah? And for us, you know, how we're going to put that eight inch AC in this label? You're not going to go to the label, you're going to write, you're going to label, like edit label text, you know, some people might have that tendency to you know, try to modify this way. No, this one is supposed to extract the data from the property sets of the line work. So I'm going to select here the line work. I'm going to go here to properties. And then you're going to see when, when you added, you know, this, uh, this property says you're going to see the stuff on the bottom here says, you know, pretty much this is the content, the show for, the, you know, by the label. 
So I'm gonna go to the properties and I'm gonna come in here and put it, you know, where it's instead of pound, I'm gonna take away the pound, I'm gonna put an eight inch, and then material it's uh, AC, you know, stuff, and then the project, you know, and then status, you know, stat, you know, status, if it's, you know, if it's like, you know, uh, let's say a band and so on stuff, you know, for us, you know, we know it's active. So I'm gonna come in here and take away the, the stat, and just leave the PROJ. And it's like, believe it gets, you know, eight inch AC PROJ. And for us, the PROJ is going to be the, you know, that ID of the project. I don't know if I have it in here. If you don't have it, you're going to find it in here. And that one is the A9316, yeah? So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to come in here to the proper to the, uh, label. And let's say it's like A3916, I guess, if I remember. What would be A3916, yeah? Right there. So there you go, I have that stuff. You don't just say like it's a wastewater because it's a wastewater by you know, definition, by symbology. Yeah? You don't put any of that stuff, yeah? So you have the first label, we're gonna take this label and we're supposed to put it in the right layer. If this moment is added by default in Seattle line text. I'm gonna take this one from here and gonna add it, you know, to the, I'm gonna put it in the V wastewater text. So I'm gonna come in here, find the V wastewater text. I'm gonna find the V trend, V trend, V wastewater text driver. And there you go, you have the first label, you have the first line work, it's labeled and it's good to go. The benefit of this label is the following. If I do like, for example, if I rotate the view, the label will always rotate, you know, to show the right way. You see like here is rotated from, you know, run out the north is pointing down. The label is always rotated to show the right way, whether it's like, you know, in, in any situations, for say, if you want in here, like this stuff, you can see the label shows out the right way. So I'm coming here to, I'm gonna put V1, I'm gonna put this set back to zero, zero. Like back to the north point in north, and right away you have the label. Yeah, so now if the label is placed, it just had to be moved wherever it's supposed to be more convenient according to the plan. So I'm going to take this label and take it from here and move it, you know, wherever it's supposed to like so it doesn't go on top of, you know, the other line work and so on. Yeah, so right away I have like the label and stuff. Now, the benefit by using one power line here is that I can add this label again. Yeah, so for example, let's say if I have to add this label, you know, like down in here, I'm going to say add. I'm not, you know, like for example, here, you can see that it's already labeled. So you just have, I, I'm going to do it here, I'm going to say match layer, I'm going to take this label. I'm going to match it, you know, to be matched to this line, right here. Yeah. So there you go, you have like the data for it, you know, match the same label twice. And then you can take this label and take, you know, the diamond stuff and move it around where it's supposed to be. Yeah? So this is when it's, when it's about like, you know, uh, let's say pipe label. Now, the final step in here, because we are moving to use, you know, to show, uh, we are moving to show the, um, what's called the walls, you are supposed to define the walls of the pipes, yeah? Because, you know, for for separation, you are supposed to do dimension from wall to wall. So, for this case, you know, I'm supposed to show the walls of the pipe, you know, I know it's an 8 inch AC, that means, you know, if I have to make uh, the wall of the pipe, the walls are going to be like, what, 0.3 uh, feet away, the 8 inches translates in a 0.66. So divided by two is 0 0.4, 0 0.3 on each side of the pipe. So I'm gonna tap here and say offset. I'm gonna put here 0 0.33. Take this pipe. Now I'm not gonna put it on that side on this tab. Now I have like two parts on that stuff, but this one does, does have the right display, it's supposed to show a wall. So I'm gonna take you know, this line work and I'm gonna put it in the right layer. And the right up of this time will be the wastewater pipe. And right there, you're gonna have like you know the eight inch pipe with the with the center line displaying you know the direction and flow and all that kind of stuff yeah so now pretty much at this moment you are done with the wastewater pipes you have to do this stuff for every wastewater pipe and so on but you know that's the idea you're going to have the pipe make sure you connect to the right way then offset you know once it's the right location and offset you know the walls to, you know, to get the walls and then you're going to add the label yeah now the last step in here to be for you to label the let's say the the manholes yeah now to label the manholes we're going to use Cogo points for the labels, you know, so the Cogo points are going to be, you know, place the Cogo points, the survey point, and that label, you know, to that point, the survey point, you're going to attach, you know, again, metadata, pretty much the same we did for the line work, we're going to have to attach metadata to Cogo point. So I'm going to go here to insert, and I'm going to say here, no, it's on home tab, I'm going to go home tab, I'm going to go to points, I'm going to say point creation tools, and then you're going to see that I have like a default layer shows up, you know, as the use current, you know, that's fine, it's not a problem. But you're gonna come in here, gonna say here to gonna put you know to create it. So you click, you know, click, click on the button to create the point. You're gonna put the point at the center of the map hole. So you're gonna put you know the point right there. And the point description, I'm gonna call it, you know, like wastewater map hole, there you go for my purposes. Elevation, I don't care about it, stuff, you know, I just want to use the point. Now it's like when the point's created, you know, it has like you know all this stuff you know next to it. You know, that means you know, if you see the kind of stuff, it means you know it uses a property set point, yeah. 
So the, you know, to get a property signal, select the cocoa point, you're going to go to properties, like the AutoCAD properties. And of course, again, extended data, you're going to see on the bottom left corner, it's uh, not in the add property set. So you're going to click on this side and click on the button to add it and click OK. And you're going to say, because the ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and change me. Yeah? So this stuff, you know, what we need from here, we need, you know, the, the ID of the maple, and this one is A9026. So how are we going to add that one? You're not going to go and edit the, the text. You're not going to go here to edit the label text. You're going to select the, the cover point, and we're going to go to properties. And with the properties, you see, you, see, you have the data right here, one, two, three, four, five, and change me. On change me, I'm going to take, you know, you can put the website on my phone, so on, but typically I take the change me away. I do not want the change me. And I'm going to come here, the one, two, three, four, five, and this one for me should be the eight, nine, zero, two, six. So I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to take this stuff. Come on. Eight nine zero two six. And let's see if the label gets updated. Come on, there, manager, go away. The idea now, now the only step left for it is be, be for me to put this stuff in the wastewater text layer. So I'm gonna take this stuff in here, go on the bottom to show some V wastewater text. And right there, you have to label the stuff. Of course, this label also rotates the same way as this stuff pretty much. So the only if you, the one stuff you're gonna have, like you know, once you get into the place, the production the production time to get into you know, the label, the only stuff you have to do is like you know to move the label where it's supposed to be, like stuff you know for the rotation, you know, because you know depending on rotation, you know, see if I if I keep it back, I'm gonna do a D1, and I'm gonna say maybe from here to here, you can see how it looks on, on this side here. Yeah? So because every time I say D1, I'm gonna say zero comma zero, zero comma zero, and then zero comma zero, and I'm back to this stuff, you know. So. Uh, the ID 89026 so at this moment I'm good to go in here and delete you know this label yeah so I have the label now the bet the beauty of like when it comes about the five labels this ones you are supposed to add them you know there's no way for you to copy this label across and stuff now when it comes about the points you know there's no reason for you to make another point you can always copy the point yeah so for example if I take this stuff I'm gonna say copy this point and I'm gonna copy this point I'm gonna copy it to the next manual so where's the next panel I'm gonna put it you know in this location I put it across to the center Let's like use the next point number, that's fine. Now I'm here gonna select is the fee nine zero fee zero. So I'm gonna take you know this point, I'm going to properties, and I'm going to here to just type in you know, three nine zero three zero. And right there you have the label, and you can keep going. So now here I'm done with this one, I'm gonna delete this stuff. So pretty much, you know, once you drop the data, you can just remove the old data that you're doing because you know you are supposed to have a single source of truth for the whole utility data, yeah? which I'll save. And I'm good with stuff. So pretty much you can keep going, you know, through the whole stuff, you know, do, you know, all the other mouses and so on, you know, till you get it here, you're going to have a clean version of the data. There's, you know, all that kind of stuff for you. So this is about the wastewater. Yeah. Wastewater, it's, you know, in a way simple because manhole to manhole so on. Just make sure you're going to stop, you know, when it comes about water, it's a bit more complex because the water is more like, you know, more, uh, let's say it has, you know, a bit, uh, many more, um, let's say, data, like, for example, like the features and so on. So because of the time you have to when you look at the data, it's a little bit more work to, for waste for water versus wastewater. Yeah. So right now here, like let's focus on the water. Now, when it comes about the water, it's the same idea. You see, this is the wastewater. If I come here from wastewater and I'm gonna change it here to water, you're gonna have you know the water data, you know, displayed right there. So now in here, let's focus, you know, for example, in this location in the on the left side. In here, I'm gonna go to plus, I'm gonna do a bit of the plus because I want to look at the data. But you're gonna find, you know, I have a 12 inch CI and I have like, for example, I have a, like a TV and I have a valve and so I'm pretty much you know, identify all the data. Then I have a valve in here and I have like a hydrant in here. Yeah, so pretty much this is a 12 inch CI and it gives you pretty much the size of it. You know, this is what's the main design in here. I guess, I don't know what's class, it's 24 inch yeah, it goes through the, you know, through the stuff. So when it comes about the water, the same way, like, you know, if you want to look for the plants, you'll have to go, for example, let's say if I want to the maybe plants, you can select in here, select, you know, for example, I want to select, you know, this one. And if there's any data, I'm gonna, you're going to take you to it, you know, you're going to be able to download the stuff. So for example, I want to download the plan for this, you know, for, for this design. I can come here, there's the PDF. When I open the PDF, so you're going to see that, you know, it opens the PDF. And just go to this stuff, go to the plan set, find the location for your water design, and then try to remap it based on this stuff, you know. So what I'm going to in here, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to say save it. And ask me what I want to save it. Of course, I'm going to save it in my project folder. So I'm going to go to one Garcia Boston. I'm going to, go to the CDS projects. I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to go to the design. I'm going to go to U3 coordination, U3 records. I'm going to make a new one. It's called what? Water. 
They are going to go to the water and I'm going to hear save. So they go have the plan set for pretty much the research for the stuff. Of course, you can open it, then you can look for the water, and then you can, uh, you know, pretty much adjust the data based on the research. Now, back to one, it was like the, the plans, yeah? Now, if you want to get, like, for what we have also in the section drawing, it is like, you know, pretty much, you know, it gives a bit more information about, like, the what's supposed to be there and what's the offset from, from the router and so on, yeah? Now, when it comes about the intersection joint, but the next research in here, we're going to go to the, we're going to go back to the, you know, to the location. Now, intersection joints, joints like, now, see, see, it is intersection joint. Intersection joints got activated by the features, not by the stuff. So, if I click intersection joint, and I click on the pipe, you know, on the line here, I do, it, it do not give me anything. There's no image of this location, you know. In order for you to see intersection joint, you are supposed to select, you know, a feature or an appearance, yeah? So, in here, if I come in here and select, you know, for example, the valve at this location, if it's, if it's an intersection joint, it's going to open it for me, yeah? So right back, you can see there's like this is intersection joint, so I can come in here and do what? Save. And as I ask you where you have to save it, you can save this location, there's the 30 A92, there's the intersection joint for the, you know, what? And here I have all the other I have like the property lines or the right away, it tells me like, you know, how far it's like and what it is right here. So for me, it's just a matter of mapping the line work based on the research from here. Of course, it's a little bit more intensive, but it has to be done, yeah? So, once you look at this stuff, you can come in here and update the data. Of course, you can see here, this is the GS data. You can see that I have the GS data right in here. And then I have like you know, the ID for the other stuff. And this one is the survey data, yeah? Of course, for us, we're gonna rely on the survey data. So right, right in here is pretty much, I can kind of clean up the data. So in, in here, I know that I have a, a hydrant. I'm gonna come in here and delete you know, this GS hydrant. I know that I have a valve. I'm gonna delete you know, that valve. And then I will have to connect you know, the line work you know, pretty much the existing, the ways, the water line work, yeah? So here you can come in, I'm going to see a pod line, and go from this center. You can come in here, pretty much, you can put to the center there if you want to. And then you're going to go in here, for now, you know, I'm going to say perpendicular. Of course, you know, I didn't map, you know, this one in here yet. You have to map it, you know, once you, once you map it the right way, you're going to connect it in the right location, but at this moment, you're going to have the line work for it, yeah? So I'm going to come in here and take this one, take this stuff, and I'm going to change it in here from B, from the zero, I'm going to put it in the B water. And I guess this one for me, I put it, you know, because it's part of the stuff, I'm going to put this, I put it as maybe as a service for me. I'm going to use a service because lots of times, you know, like this one's going to, you know, the mains, typically I'm, I'm, a, I'm a matching the mains, I'm, I'm, I'm mapping the water line with the mains themselves, yeah. So this, if you want that stuff, you know, you can put it as a main, but you know, if you want to differentiate between the mains and stuff, and not doesn't it's considered like it you know, as a main, but to be like you know, I'm gonna put it as a hive, you know, like a, as a service for it. You know, we can put it on maybe uh, on a different layer for it. Now here, will, let's say if I have like you know, this is a 12 inch CI, and you're gonna see right in here, I have, uh, at this location, I have a couple of valves in here, but I do not have any, any, I do not have any what's called. This is the case here. In here, I have the valves, so you're gonna see the valves into GIS. Might be somewhere in, I don't know, somewhere down there, maybe to the other intersection. If I come in here, you're gonna find, where's my stuff? My bad. So I got here, it's like, you know, I have all these valves here, but these valves, they're not, uh, they're not, you know, they're not surveyed, you know, so for, because, you know, maybe at that, that location, it was a safety issue to survey the data. So for me, what I'm supposed to, need, to do in here, I'm supposed to adjust the valves and the line work here, I'm supposed to adjust to my research, you know, so you do not leave it as is because it's a GIS grade. It just it can be sometimes two, three feet up, or sometimes can be, in some cases, as I see for the city of Austin, can be 20 feet up, yeah? So because of that one, always show up the data to the way we are supposed to be based on research and, you know, like, uh, let's say, any other type of data. So if I look in here, maybe sometimes I can get the help from my aerial. So I'm coming here, going to say reload. I've been looking here, you know, sometimes you can see maybe like on the ground, if you have like a high quality aerial, you might be able to see like the location of your valves. Yeah, right now here it looks like maybe because of the payment, you cannot see it, you know. But if the valves, you know, like say if the valve in here, it's, you know, it's at, uh, it's uh, maybe the location, you're going to take the valve in location and readjust the line work to match that valve, yeah. Kind of makes sense to that one. Now I'm assuming that maybe in here this, um, uh, let's say this line work is in that location. So the way is so the way you're gonna make you know uh, this line work in here. Now, let's say I'm gonna assume that you know it comes from here. The location comes maybe from nearest from here. Maybe it's from here. And I'm gonna go maybe it goes like this, and then it goes like this. So this one it's just a just an idea that you know like okay this is not GS, this is maybe this is the true location. So I'm gonna come in here and goes you know maybe to that location. Now this is the updated line work. It's supposed to be the water line work. I'm going to drop down and change it here from B, uh, from the zero. I'm going to put it to V water line. Now you can see that I have the V water line. 
So this is the VR line from from a survey or pretty much we connect the survey data. This is the landmark that comes from GS. You know, so once I have the, the landmark from the survey, I will come in here and delete you know, the data from the GS because I'm supposed to have a, you know, only a single, you know, a single, let's say I'm going to have to have a single um, source of truth. Yeah, so I'm going to come in here and delete that one because I already have the landmark and it connects that one and it goes up to there and it looks like it connects at that location. Oh, yeah. So now once I have this landmark, I'm going to just extend in here this one. I'm going to say extend. Maybe from here I'm going to extend it to that one. That's good. Now I have the line for here. It says it's a 12 inch, so I know that I'm supposed to generate the pipe, the pipe for it. So I say offset. I'm going to say here this 12 inch in a 12 inch to one foot. So it'll be a point, point 0.5 on each side. So I'm going to take this one from here to there, to there, to there. I'm going to take this one from here to here and put them in the V water pipe. B V water pipe, rather, you have the pipe for it. I'm going to say control S, save for myself. And then it's a matter of labeling. Yeah, so, you know, to label it, you know, you already have the label in here. Now, this is the label from GS, but this is just for your purposes. You know, so like, do not use this stuff because, you know, first of all, it's not the right size. The second of all, it's not the right style. You know, it's not standard style. And if I see it on the plans, if we see it on the plans, we're going to call it out because, you know, you didn't do the homework. So because of that one, I'm going to go through the process of labeling this uh, pipe and to label this one, I'm going to do the same way as I did for the other, for the way so I'm going to come to it. I go to properties and go to the bottom in here. You see, I'm doing a reverse in a way. I didn't add the label first. I add first, you know, the metadata when I add the label. So I'm going to say add, click in here and clear all and select the polyline utility and click OK. Now, once I have that one, I'm going to go to properties and I'm just modifying the stuff here to say whatever that label is supposed to say, so say 12 inches. And then is the material in here instead of the M18 and I put the DI. And then for the project, you know, in here, the VR PROJ, take it away and put, you know, 2001 dash 0028. And then the status, you know, don't worry about it, it's not abandoned, it's still, you know, active. So take away the status away and click enter. Now, that label is supposed to be showing in here. So to add the label, we're going to go to the annotate, add labels. In the job that we change the line and curves, they're going to say click add, they're going to select you know, the pipe or the line work in the center, and right there, I'm going to have the existing age, the I2000 uh, stuff. Now, this time, the label shows up, you know, this time, the last time, I'm going to say a reverse on it, and do a reverse on the label, and then you're going to see like the pipe will pass so pretty much, you know, going to take this one and move it, you can see like it moves like this and so on, yeah. Now, uh, rather, I'm going to put it, you know, maybe sometimes you might put it in a, in a place that looks maybe the best on the plants. Sometimes it doesn't look the best on any place and stuff. But it's like, you know, we got, I'm going to put the label in here. Like this. I have the label. The label is there, of course, it's supposed to be placed in the right layer. So I'm going to go to the home tab, go into the Seandish line text, and I'm going to put it in here in the V water text, yeah? Right, so now I have the label for that one. Now this location, I'm going to have like, you know, I'm going to have like, you know, you see I have a valve in there and I have a fire hydrogen. Now, this one we are supposed to label. So, we are supposed to label all the uh, permanents. Yes, we have IDs. Yeah. So, that one is the same idea that we did before. I'm going to go here to points, point creation tools. I'm going to click on the manual. I'm going to put, you know, like a cocoa point in here. I'm going to put point description. It'll be like, you know, water fire hydrogen. Too much, you know, take the stuff. I don't care the stuff and it just gives you an ID. So, I'm going to do this stuff. I'm going to go to the properties. And I'm going to go on the bottom, add the property set, click OK. It becomes, you know, one, two, three, four, five, change me. Select it again. Go to properties. Take away the change me if you don't need it, you know, to say, say FH for a hydrogen. And then in here, you're going to put, you know, the ID that you get from the 97, it's 97967. So you're going to come in here, come on, expand. 97967. There you go, I have the first one. And then, you know, you can put, you know, change the layer. So you can say match layer. So I'm going to take this stuff, you know, take this label. Sorry. Take this label and then match it the same as uh, that one. Uh, hold on. Take this label and take this one and match it the same as that one. There goes the rest of it. Now, when I take this label, I can just copy it, you know, because it's not a label. It's, it's a cocoa point. I'm going to take, you know, copy to this location. Click OK. And then this one should be 97987. So I'm going to take this one in here. Go to properties. 9. Seven nine eight seven. I put zero, so I'm gonna put here nine. Now we have those labels together. It's just a matter for you to clean up the old data. So take it, put an unplottable layer if you still want to use it as a reference. 
Otherwise, take it out of it and delete it out of the platform because it is stuff. Now, if you start into 6 inch DI, you can take that label away, delete it, you know, and if you want to label this out with a 6 inch DI, you know, you can label it. But before, you know, if you those ones that have the services, I've been able to say label the services, it's just 6 inch DI or stuff, so I'm going to say delete that one. So I have the stuff for it to arrive. Now I'm done with this one, I'm going to delete this label. And pretty much, you know, I'm done when it comes about water. So it is like, you know, map the line work according to the research. Map the utilities, make sure for the utilities that you have like survey, if there is a survey block for the utilities and being removed the GIS block. And then you're going to have a single source of truth that has like, you know, like for the data that you're you going to have like survey data. For the data values of survey, you're going to have true, true up or you know, like, you know, you know, readjusted features and line work yeah? so because you are supposed to do that one. Now, when it comes about the line work, for example, for survey, like, you know, let's say in here, if I do not have like, a, uh, if I do not have any survey data, you're going to take this data and you're going to realign it. You know, you're not going to change the size. So this, so you see like in here, this pipe in here or line work, and this applies to wastewater and linear utilities. This one connects, you know, survey, di survey date grade data. It says B water line. However, this data in here, you do not have any like survey data. This one has an OGS. So I can do it on this one. So you're not going to change it to here. You're going to put the B water line. You're going to keep it in the VUI one line because this one is GS grade. It's just that it's a readjusted. Yeah. So pretty much survey data is connected with survey line work, like survey layer line work. GS data is connected to GS layer line work. So keep those ones together. Yeah. Okay. So this, this is when it comes about like uh, water. You know, it's it's a very intensive process. You just have to go through the, you know, through it you know, to make it work. But at the end, you should have like a nice stuff, you know, that looks like close to what's supposed to look, yeah. So this is about, uh, we did the water, we did the wastewater. The next one I'm going to focus, it will be on the storm draining. Right now, you can find it here a couple of storms. You're going to find, you know, this one in here, right here, the storm drain, and you have like this drain here. Now, when it comes to stuff, you know, you have something to start with. And um, let's see in here, do I have any stuff in the survey that is like, you know, there's a map holder. I don't know if I have, it looks like this one is only from GS, or I have one in the survey. Right, you have one in the survey. So, so, so you just like here when it comes about like the data, sometimes the the watersheds uh, survey survey data, it's a bit more accurate. It's close enough to what the GS would be. So for it to be much easier to map the data when it comes about you know like storm drain, yeah, because the data is right there. It's just you know a matter for you to connect the data with the stuff in here. So for example, if I look at this location, looks like this pipe is bending so many times, and I don't know how it one works. I don't know how they they do it and stuff, but in here. Looks like in here I have an inlet. You see, like my inlet inlets from the survey. So it's just a matter for you. The if you do not have like some line work for it, you know, you just have to. And maybe the line work might be the. So I'm gonna go to the display. Let me say go to layer manager. Layer manager, and I'm gonna go to the XREF. I'm gonna go to the this survey, and find the B maybe site feature concrete or some kind of stuff. So B B site features feature 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 right up. So I think, you know, this one feature concrete, this one's on. And go away. Right, but you see like, you know, it gives you like you know, the, edge of, the edge of the inlet, you know, however, so, I bet you're supposed to have like a symbol. So this stuff, you know, you can use that symbol from the like much better line of the stuff, or you can take, you know, this one and you move the other one. But, you know, typically, if you have the data right in there, you can connect with the back of curve as one. So you don't, you don't necessarily need, you know, this, you know, inlet, you know. So in here, if I have to clean it, I'm going to take, you know, that inlet, delete it. Because I have the data right in there. Now in here, you're gonna have the line work in here that connects, you know, to other, let's say, survey grade line work. So I have another inlet right there. I'm gonna delete that one. You see right there, I have the line work. So for us, you know, it's a matter to connect the line work when it comes to bus service. So if I assume that this one is in the right location, I'm gonna come in here and set my layer. I'm gonna delete, delete this one also. I'm gonna come in here and put, you know, my layer. You can put, you know, let's say a polyline. Let's do a start the polyline. Let's assume that you're going to say, going to see from center, it's close enough to that one. Of course, you have to do a little bit of research. But I'm going to be from here. Looks like it bends this way, and I don't know how it bends, but you know, let's assume that it goes like this. And you're going to go a little bit, you know, I'm going to show like, you know, where you have, like, so let's say this is the, the, the storm drain, and I take this one here, I'm going to put it in the right layer. So for us, going to be go to layer manager, uh, XREF, I'm going to put it here in the B. Because we are connecting you know, survey grade data. So you connect survey grade as supposed to be in a V layer versus the VI. So this is going to come into the VI V storm. V storm where V storm line. Rather. 
you know, show like, you know, here's the stuff, you know, so once you have it on together, I'm going to take, you know, the data from here and delete it, you know, so I'm going to take the one, you know, the old one and delete, you know, just keep the new one, you yeah? know, so I'm going to take this stuff in here, take that one, you can always change the colors, you know, if you want to see, like, you know, that one, you know, the GS stuff, you can change the color for them, I'm going to delete that one, I'm going to delete this one in here, and that stuff, you know. So then you can connect the stuff with the same type of line work. So if I say add selected, I'm gonna go from here. I go from you know from there's an inlet in here, but I don't know what is uh, located. So pretty much in here you might might be an area inlet or some kind of stuff. So you might have to put a symbol for that. So from here you're gonna go perpendicular on that one maybe up like this. So this time I'm gonna come in here and delete everything except you know my data that I created. That one I'm gonna say delete and right up. Uh, that one is delete, and then the SD is supposed to go away, and driver. So now from this one, of course, you know, you have to do the same stuff as before, but let's look at, you know, how how do you look for the, you know, for the data for it. Like I say, if I want to look for the, let's say, for, this might be for water and wastewater. Now, if, for, if you are looking at the data, you have like, uh, let's say you have four options, you know. Now, the one that's, that's spelled out into the workflow, and if I look at the workflow in here, let me see to the uh, teams. Uh, it takes CAD. Let's look at the workflow from the I'm gonna access it here. I'm gonna go to CBS, uh, SharePoint, uh, no, workflows. We gotta go to this workflow. This one it's A to EF. Indexing utilities. If you go in the workflow, you can see that you know for water and water took care of it. You know, now when it comes about in the stone drain, you're gonna see what the stone drain, you know, it asks you to go like to the you know ask to RGS stuff if you have to use RGS. Now when it comes about, about the data for RGS, you know, you can use the RGS. However, it's like um, there's there, I I I got you know I noticed recently there are other options that you can do without without you have to use like with the stone drain since I use RGS Pro. I found a way for you, you can do it without using the RGS Pro, you know, and uh, so for us, like maybe I'm gonna update the workflow to use, you know, the, the the updated data. But you know, there's always, you know, you always have the option you can use RGS Pro to look at the, you know, the stone data. But you don't necessarily have to do it anymore. Pretty much, you can use the same stuff. There's supposed to be an options there for you to access it via online, yeah. And that options, you know, is the following. So I go to the Aston Water Map Viewer. This is the is Aston Water. This is a watershed. This is Aston Water area. So if I come in here to the water and I check the water and I'm gonna go in the bottom where it says local base layers. And then if I go on the bottom here with local base layers and turn on the storm water, you're supposed to be able to see all the storm drain without having to go to RGS, yeah? So you're going to get, you know, pretty much you're going to get all the data from, you know, watershed via the Aston Water Web Map Viewer, yeah? So in right here, you can see that, you know, I have all the data. I have, like, in here, for example, um, at the manhole, if I click on that manhole. It says a manhole, it tells you, it tells you something, it says it's a paid over. So I guess, you know, that's why they could not map it because of what is paid over. It gives you like the top elevation, it tells you like the you know, surface elevation and so on. Now these elevations are based, you know, do not take them as, you know, elevations as the elevations you're going to put in the plant set because, you know, the data in here might be on a specific vertical data, yeah? And the vertical data is, it, it changes from like, you know, for example, 2003 to 2012 and 2018 they change vertically, you know, so so because the time will be a difference, maybe sometimes maybe a couple of inches and so on. So because of the time, this one is just the information purpose for, you know, so look at this data. And if you want to know right now, it's like the top elevation, surface elevation, and the rim elevation on the bottom, sump, right here, it gives you like the depth of it, you know, so, when I, so if you take the depth and then you look at the elevation in here, like what's the elevation that you got from the survey, you can take the depth down and figure out the invert based on the on the based on the survey. So do not take you know the elevations from the the elevations from uh, from uh, GS as the true elevations. Those are the elevations that they use them based on the vertical data at the day data at the time they they were mapped. You know, and I'm gonna go for that one again when it's about mapping data in 3D. Yeah? But you know, just stay fine on that one, you know, pay attention to that one and uh, you know and you'll be fine with that. So Options, ask the water map, what map here. There's a second option here. It's a, it's the Aston Water Watershed Protection Department web map. You know, they have one of them and you can see the same kind of stuff, you know, it's available here. You can go and uh, use it and search, you know. Now, uh, now this one is the internal one for the city of Aston Intel user. You see like you use the RGS online uh, login. Aston uh, Watershed also, they have an external one. So this, they have one that is the public right in here. Now for this one, you don't, you don't have to be logged in RGS online. You can use it, you know, 
he doesn't have as much data, you know, but he has enough data for you not to, you know, to be able to do your work. So I mean, here select, you know, this, um, let's see if I select the same manhole, you know, right in, maybe that, that's the manhole. If I select the same manhole, you can see that this is paved over and it tells you the sum, the surface elevation doesn't give you like, you know, it doesn't give you like, you know, for example, the two decimals, it's an even out number, but then you have something else, something to start with, you know, so if you're outside of the city, and you do not have stuff, you know, you can go to this website and I put maybe in the, in the, I'm gonna, I can put it in the workflow and you can get, you know, the, the, the same data, yeah. And, um, and then the last option for you to be to use the RGS online, you know, but, you know, then you have to go, you know, remote to a machine if you don't have RGS online, then, you know, make sure that you can log in and go for the workflow, you know. So maybe for the workflow, I'm going to update the workflow to, to use, you know, maybe the Ask the Water Map Viewer for, you know, for a series of us users. And for the other, uh, for the other city of us, for the other users also of CDS, we do not have access to the internal city of us network. They can use, you know, the watersheds, you know, web map viewer. But when it comes about the water and wastewater data, as I mentioned before, that data it's always available for the city users as part of the web map viewer. But for the uh, for the outside of city of us users, they are supposed to make a request via the Aston Water Web Request Form. Yeah. So that that uh, that left away. Now, when it comes about, you know, like we have the pipe, you know, we added, we added, you know, the this ladder for the pipe, you know. So now this is the center of the pipe. Of course, you know, we need that this one is a 24 inch RCP. So we're gonna take it here, gonna say an offset. We're gonna offset in here, like you know, 12 inches on each side, on each side. So we're gonna say offset, it's 12 inches, you know, it's a one foot on each side. So I'm taking here, offset on that side. I was starting to take this pipe in here or the line work. And in here, you're gonna just put in the V strong pipe, you know. Now you're gonna say like, hey, this is the internal diameter of the pipe, you know, it's not the outside, you know, sometimes, you know, it matters the outside, you know, now you get it close, you know, and if you, if you want, you know, to get, you know, the outside diameter, you know, to figure out what's the offset and define the time to give it the outside, but, you know, for most of the pipes, you know, it's not such a big difference, it'll be like, you know, but if you are in a bind and you have to be like, you know, you have to count every single inch, like for, you know, half an inch, then, you know, you'd be better getting you know, your offset, you know, like your outside diameter, you know, but for the, for example, for PVC, and the ends one, it doesn't make too much of a difference, you know, I guess, you know, at least, you know, from what I think. So now you have like the outside, you know, you, you have the, the wall of the stuff, you know, when it comes about like, you know, the, when it comes about, you know, the data, you know, make sure that, you know, it's, uh, you have it defined. So it's a matter for you to label it, yeah. Now when it comes about labeling for, uh, for watershed at this moment, the requirement is for you to label only the pipes. You're not supposed to label the structures, you know, so the structures, you know, they are there. You know, stuff, you know, so we do not have a label, we do not have a requirement for you to label the, you know, the, for example, the, the manholes or so on. However, there's a requirement for you to label the storm inlets in the erosion control plans. Yeah? So, for example, we are supposed to identify all the features in the storm, you know, like in the, you know, in the erosion control plans. Yeah. But, you know, for like, you know, for labeling of, uh, let's say, of IDs and so on, you know, you know, there's no requirement for watershed to label in the, you know, the features like the manholes of the inlets. But, you know, you know, for overall city of Austin requirements, you are supposed to label the pipes, yeah? And to label the pipes, the same way as you did for the other one, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say add label. I'm going to say in here, select, you know, this, uh, maybe this pipe in here, I'm going to select it like that. Add the label on the type of city of stuff. So now it's just a matter for you to add, you know, the, the property sets. So I'm going to go to the extended data, add the property sets, click OK. I mean, clear all, select the priority, click OK. You can see that you know now change to existing material. Now take this label, put it in the right layer. This will be placed in the V storm text. V storm text. Driver, right it's placed right there. Now once you place this label, you can take it to and move it to where you want to move it. You know whatever sits better on on the plan and so on. And um, and you have like stuff. You now it's just a matter for you to add you know the 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 data to it. So I'm gonna take you know the the polyline. And I'm gonna go here to the properties and I change in here to, and we're gonna be a 24 inch. And then on where it says M18, I'm gonna say here RCP. And then project, you know, if you know a project, you're gonna put the project, otherwise, you know, you should be done, you know, like the stuff. So you, I'm gonna take away the pre ROG because I don't have any for now. But you remember, you know, if it was a project, you, can, you know, you know, you can use that one, click enter. And you should have like the label that says exist is putting which RCP, take this label and move it where it's supposed to be that one. Now, sometimes, you know, you might want to move it, you know, maybe a little bit above the pipe, you know, stop. So, you, know, you have the option that to just move it and stop. But do not, you know, leave them like, do not, you can reset it from here, the label. Do not move it like, you know, somewhere like this stuff, you know, because, you know, you should not be able to see that one. So, I'm going to take it somewhere here. I'm going to see, you know, sliding just above the pipe, make it look beautiful. I mean, like, you know, nice aesthetically and stuff. 
and you should be good to go. Now, once you have that one done, you're going to take this label and you're going to delete it, you know, because you are done, pretty much you have the, the, you know, the, um, the standard label, you are done, you know, about the labeling that one, you know, so you can show S right now right here. Now, what if, what I, what I forgot about the, um, what I forgot about the, uh, the water one, the water data, you are supposed to label also the intersection drawings on the plans, you know, so if you come in here, I'm going to look at you know, kind of an idea, you are supposed to put, you know, this label on the plans, the intersection, you know, 7974 or so on, and that label is placed, you know, like, you now typically you can place it in the, um, you can place it in the, uh, you can place, uh, let me see, close it. I'm going to say control C, go back to the mouse space. You can place it, you know, in here, like in the model space and stuff, you know, you know, in V water text, you know, or you can place it maybe in the model space. I mean, because, you know, if you have to show it, you know, lots of places, you know, independent stuff, you know, stuff, you might have to duplicate the label and so on, yeah? So just know that that label is to be placed. And that label, if you have to insert it in here, you're going to find it under the, let me see, if I go to the two, two palettes. So I'm going to hit two palettes. I say on, if I go here to the two palettes and I'm going to put it as part of the general, see the last one maybe general because the general label. Uh, do I have a general detail? I don't know where is that one. If not, you know, tags, right, with tag utility, click on that one. Now put that label somewhere in here and put, you know, like this. And then you're going to put intersection, I guess, you know, going to put like intersection, you're going to put it, you know, I guess space and then be like, I don't know, uh, what intersection drawing was that one. So we go back to the Aston Water World Map Viewer. And if I go back here to the Take away the storm, storm water and we'll go back to water. Is the intersection nice? Nice. Uh, what's that? Or is the uh, which one? Like, I I even downloaded it. You know, Gosh, I'm losing my my this three zero eight nine two. Yeah. So we're gonna put it here three zero eight nine two. You think okay. Now this one is supposed to be placed you know, on a right scale for this one. I'm going to go to properties and I put change here to 20 scale because you know put it on 20 scale. Okay, I'm going to look the right way for that one. I'm going to take this one and put it you know, somewhere on the side. I can hear pretty much, you know, you can put it in the middle of the section ground and stuff, but you know, you try to keep it away because you know you don't want too many like you know labels, you know, especially if this one is a busy intersection. You might not want this label to be on top of that one. And this you can take this label, of course, it has like you know the alignments and stuff. So it's an align, uh, I guess, on the left and the right. I don't know where's the time on the left. But if you take yourself from here and align it like this, it's like you can put like in align to stuff. But uh, they can align it to the view. So I take it from here and move it, you know, where it's supposed to be, maybe whatever, and you're supposed to be good on that one. Uh, control save in this moment. I said about, you know, the storm drain, you know, whatever stuff, and I suppose you would have to label the, you know, the, you know, the structures, you know, you are good on that one. Now, uh, so pretty much we have water, wastewater, we have stone drain, maybe I know, and now it will be a case of other utilities. And other utilities in here are going to have, maybe sometimes you have natural gas. So right now here with natural gas, there's a six inch CS on it. Now this one here to be for you to readjust it because I don't have any, like, you know, unless you have like, you know, some data to connect, this one you can always stay like in, in a GS format, you know. So right now you're going to see that you have the data for it and I'm just trying to figure out, you know, the location. If you look in here, it says like you can see sometimes a piece of text that says 20, 25 PL, you know, that means it's 25 feet away from the property line. So if you have the property line right in here, let's say panel line, I'll put it, you know, let's say from here to here. And then after this stuff in here, after 25 feet, you're going to give you a pretty idea where that, you know, natural gas is supposed to be, it's supposed to be right there. So I'm going to take, you know, this line work, and I'm going to pretty much, I'm going to move it, you know, to be where it's supposed to be along the twine. So I'm going to take, you know, the line work the way, you know, the way it is. Because I don't have any, you know, I don't have any data from survey, maybe for natural gas. Yeah. If I have data from the survey as natural gas, you know, I can use, you know, like, you know, the V natural gas. But otherwise, you're going to see in here, I have like this is the VI natural gas line because it's GS line. So for your purposes, if you do not have any survey at all, let's say for your project and you have to, you know, stop, you'll have to adjust this line work. You know, you are supposed to adjust the VI natural gas line the way it's supposed to be based on research, or you can redefine it in the same layer. But do not define the line work to be in the V layer because the V layer, V dash layers that are only associated or, you know, like uh, it's associated or, you know, assigned only for survey grade quality, you know, data. Yeah. But for anything else, you know, you're going to use the VI layers, yeah. So now that being said, that one, you know, just, you know, uh, you know uh, let's say fix, you know, your, uh, fix your, um, your data rather. Let's say maybe I fix this data. So it's a matter for you, you know, I'm going to come in here, delete, you know, this piece of this because I don't need it anymore. 
So it's a matter for me to label it. You know, so when it's about labeling, I like to see in CS. So I guess it's uh, still something. So to label it is the same idea. Click add. I'm gonna add the label in here. And then to this time, I'm gonna select you know, this one. I'm gonna go to properties. I'm gonna go hit extended data. I'm gonna go in the bottom and click OK. So if this one, if you have like some data, you're gonna use you know the the natural gas line text. It'll be a natural gas line. And you're gonna put the text in the natural gas line text. But this one is the DI stuff. So I'm gonna take this one, the driver. So this one gonna be a six inch. I'm gonna go to the properties of this one. I'm gonna put, you know, in here, you can, you know, take away all the stuff you want it to be like six, six inch. And it's gonna be like CS. There you go. So this label is gonna take it, you know, and move it where it's supposed to be. Now, of course, for the purposes, you know, like the stuff, you're gonna have to have a, you know, you're gonna see this is via natural gas line. Let's go here to the manager, work my manager, and change to via layers. Now, I'm here gonna be natural gas line. It'll be like you can see that you have the natural gas line. I do not have a, I do have a pipe for it. It's a six inch, you know, so I have to put you know, the stuff in the pipe, you know, there. Now, of course, you know, I have submit your layer for stuff. Now, this one, I'm going to take this piece of text and move it to layer, the right layer. So this would be a VI natural gas text. However, because, you know, it's your labeling the natural gas line and stuff. So if you'd be like, you know, line or if you label a V dash natural gas line, you're going to put it in the V dash natural gas uh, v dash natural gas text bar because the gs you know keep you know the layer in the right layer so you're gonna keep the letter in the you're gonna keep the text the text you can put the text in the layer that's gis specific yeah now um so this is applied to any other type of utility you know if you like you, you know underground electric overhead electric the diagnosis that you know you have some of the data already in from the survey you know so it's just a matter for you to map the data now once you have all the data, it's a matter for you to move the data from the survey to the utility base file. Yeah. So for example, here once I'm done, you know, everything in the end, it's like and for everything that I have served and for everything like saying here I have a survey for this one, I'm gonna delete that one. So for everything that I have a, a survey, I did you know I removed the GS counterpart, the at the end, to my VCs at the end, you're gonna move the data out of the views out of the V site to the view side you know so in here what i would have to do at the end i would have to come in here select you know the open xref and this is done typically at the end you know pretty much once you know that you fix you know, all your utilities now right in here because you know at the end the v site or the the survey base part is supposed to be only the hard scape there it's not supposed to have any utility in it yeah so i'm going to come in here and find for example let's say i want to move all the wastewater manholes so I'm gonna come in here, take you know the wastewater manhole, you know, isolate it. So pretty much you know this isolates all the wastewater manholes. I'm gonna take you some from here. I'm gonna say here what copy zero zero. I'm gonna copy them from zero zero, and then I move them to the utility base file. In here I'm gonna go in you know utility base file. I'm gonna go in here and say page zero zero. I'm gonna save it in here. I'm gonna have like you know my survey there. So it's a view wastewater symbol, yeah. So once I do that, I'm in here. I'm gonna go to this you know base file. I'm gonna select all of them delete them and then an isolate so pretty much you know, I'm going one at a time you know and move the data out of the out of the what's called out of the survey file I'm going to move them to the utility base file you know so for example the same case you know like this one is the communication symbology I'm going to isolate it now this is going to isolate all the symbology that you know has to do with um, with the stuff now this one looks like part of, it's part of the uh, legend so I'm going to come in here I'm going to skip on that one so I'm going to take all this stuff in here and say copy zero zero and I'm going to go here to the view site and I say here page zero zero. And rather I have the stuff in here, I'm good to go. So I'm going to go back to the V site and then in here I'm going to say, maybe you can say, like, for example, I'm going to say, uh, if you still have them, you can delete them. We can come in here and say Q select. Or maybe hold on, say select. And say P for previous. Now we see that selecting, I'm going to say E, e for erase. And you're good to go. I'm gonna say I'm, you know, I'm isolating good stuff. Now I'm gonna say maybe about electric. So I'm gonna take it here. I'm gonna take you know the electric overhead part in you know, the line. I'm gonna take it here the electric you know, symbology. I have two layers selected. I'm gonna come here to isolate you know the two layers. So I'm gonna come in here and select you know all the line work. I'm gonna say copy zero zero. I'm gonna go to the view side. I'm gonna go in here and say p zero zero because typically you're not you're gonna have any GS data for you know for electric yeah. So p zero zero. And there you go, I have all my data in here. This is my survey data. I'm gonna go back to the V site. I'm gonna say here, select, I say P, P for previous, and say E for erase, and so on, and isolate. 
So pretty much, you know, you're going to go from this process, you know, until at the end, you know, you, in, in the in the semi base file, you're going to have only the hardscape data and no utility at all, yeah. So this is pretty much, you know, this how it's supposed to work, yeah. Uh, now what I'm going to say here, save, because, you know, I, I process the data for those ones, I move them and stuff. And uh, at the end, once you're done, pretty much, you, should, you, you are supposed to have, I'm going to say here, control C, control no. Uh, no, I'm not going so at the end, once you process all the data, you are supposed to have the following. All the survey data is in biology, all the survey data in line work, all the, all the pipes and the structures that are supposed to be structured and labeled. And then for the data that you do not have survey for like utility, it will be complemented by GIS data. So can you imagine, let's say, if I don't have it right in here, if I, let's say right in here, if I had a, if I had like a wastewater manhole and it doesn't show in the survey, I'm gonna have the wastewater manhole, but it's gonna be placed in the right location according to the according to the um, to the research, yeah. And then you know stuff. So pretty much the ends like you know, better good and complement. And then it's the same way for the wastewater. Now let's say if you have to use the wastewater in the GS layer, at the end you are supposed to change the line type of that layer to show directional flow. So right now in here in the case in here, we're gonna see that you know this is the case. So right now you're gonna have in here, you see, like let's say I'm gonna go to layer manager. And I'm going to make it here just so I'm going to send L2. I'm going to make a new one it's called default. But now just a bit in their state. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say uh, uh, dash LA color. And I change new color. I'm going to put in you know, a red for which one I'm going to be for all the VI layers. You see, like, you know, these are all my survey GIS layers. I pretty much I changed all the GIS layers to, you know, to be colored. Now what happens here, because like this is the survey for the storm, the survey for the storm, this is GS for the storm. So if I do not have a survey line working for the storm, this SD is supposed to go away. Now how the time goes away is by changing the line type of the layer to show directional flow, because you are supposed to show up directional flow. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to the VI survey GS, you know, find that layer, and it's going to be the VI storm line right here. And I change here from storm ESD, I'm going to change it to the storm E. And by doing stuff, you can see that it changes to the same way, pretty much you know, the same idea and stuff. You know? So for any data that you complement this, you know, GS, this GS-grade data, you are supposed to change you know, the format and the display to match you know, the same. You, know, you are supposed to change to match the stuff, to match the, to match the, the survey symbology. Yeah? So this is survey, this is GS, you know, the same stuff in here. I'm going to have like, you know, this is survey, however this stuff is here is GS. Yeah? So once you have that one, uh, once you have that one there, like, you know, it to be, just make sure that at the end, you know, and, and this one applies, you know, for wastewater and storm drain enforcement, you know, water typically it's already the right symbol. You're going to see like this one here matches this one here, so don't worry about it. But uh, it's a bit for like, you know, you know, go through the process of, you know, setting up all the, um, all the features in the right place, you know, according to the, to the, to the research and uh, connect all the data the right way, label it, and you should be good to go. So make sure that there are no duplicates for the data, you know? So I should not have like, you know, like two type of different data sets, one from survey, one from GS for the same type of feature, you yeah. know? Any kind of stuff, you know, that's what's in it. And I guess I cover pretty much everything that's to do with um, uh, the design our processing labeling. We add property sets, finalized base file. You can, you know, pretty much you can apply to chill water, communication, electric fiber, and so on. And at the end, it's the final stuff to the end. You're going to say an audit and make sure that your base file is free of errors. Yeah. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And this concludes, you know, how you are supposed to put your base file together for utility. This is a 2D utility base file. Of course, I cannot go too much into detail because, you know, it might take maybe, you know, more than two or three hours to go in every detail. But it is like you kind of get an idea of like uh, how stuff works what's supposed to be done and um, then just follow the workflow around and you should be good on that, you know, at the end. So again, just make sure that you have one single truth, one single point of truth for all time, you know, for all the data, for utility data. Do not have duplicated data, yeah.